The spark for the collection began when I started thinking about how much I really love the effect of black and white. The way I recreated the feeling was to take a model with black hair, ivory skin, put her in a milk bath, and that milk becomes the paper, and the paper becomes the milk. So with me is Jennifer Janesco. Jennifer is uh, an amazing abstract artist, an amazing, uh, great at drawing people. Um, I first uh, was introduced to Jennifer's work through her jewelry line um, some years ago, and I've just always enjoyed what she, did, uh, what she does and the art that she makes. I guess the biggest thing is how have you been spending this time? How have you been using it to your advantage? It's sort of my normal life. And there's not a lot of um, difference for me as far as uh, I work in my home and I can't really work outside my home. That just doesn't work for me. So I have a basement studio. And the difference is that everybody else is on pause. Um, people I work with, like licensing companies and galleries and things like that, they're on pause. So that's actually allowing me to paint and draw and do more work because I'm not constantly being pulled away to like look over a contract or um you know can you get this photographed or whatever so it's like it's really it's really been nice i mean uh that part is nice it's difficult i think for any artist or anyone trying to do any kind of retail um to like have that connection with people like we still need that connection we still need to like have that face to face so you know sales reflect that um you have to really be strong online and if you're not strong online in your website then you know it, that suffers because you don't have that connection anymore. You show in galleries all over the United States. So um, was it a little bizarre as they get these galleries with your your art in them start closing up at separate times? Um, how do you how are those gallery owners? You know. Yeah, I I see them like changing, just like we're changing in our studio um, by like strengthening our social media and strengthening our websites and things like that. They're doing the same thing. I see these galleries doing like online shows, um, doing special artist talks, events that you know normally they would do in line and um, or in person, but online is like amping up for everybody because that's our only connection so just like an artist the galleries are struggling to find that sweet spot where you can get with your customer again one of the reasons i love your work so much is because um, i've never been able to find an artist that shifts so well between abstract and figurative work and um why, how, how do you draw those parallels between your, uh, your, your types of art? You know, um, I know when people um, aren't, you know, an artist or in the studio, they look at those two types of work and they say, well, that's very different. That's crazy that you do all those things. But for me, like since the very beginning, I've done all those things because like I'm just i feel like i can't get enough out you know it's like it, it's always bubbling inside me and you know those are the two things i really love um i always say that my abstract is inspired by my travel which is interesting because um during this time that's kind of squash so i'm really kind of accessing a lot of my memories from travel and revisiting like those thoughts and ideas I had, you know, when I was in Iceland or when I was in, you know, South Africa or those things. So thank God for that past travel because like I'm still accessing that information and I don't know what this year is going to bring. Um, you know, maybe that will change my work because if I'm slowing down my travel and my abstract is inspired by travel, that may pivot it somehow. Um, but you know, for me, it's like I can shift pretty easily between the figurative and abstract just because it's, it just all flows inside. It's really hard to explain, but um, I, I, I kind of get over one for a little while and then I go back to the other and I just kind of toggle between those two. Yeah, um, that's what I, that's kind of what I was, I was wondering if, if uh, how that shifting of gears uh, uh, happens in your creative process because they are so different, but they are so, even though they're so different, they're all done so well that's nice that you to say 
Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm still like, I still never feel like I'm, I'm getting quite there, you know, which is good. Like you're always growing and learning, but I'm trying to find a way to maybe integrate more abstract elements into my figurative work and marrying those things um, is really interesting to me. So how do I take a realistic figure and kind of blend it and make it more dreamy, more um, abstract, more like a layered, uh, it's almost like a layered photograph. Like how do I take it into like more of a dream state like the abstracts are? And maybe that's like in the backgrounds or incorporating the way I like paint the figures that needs to be more abstract, you know? So I'm kind of working through that thought process of marrying those two, but we'll see where that goes. <laughs> when we get out of this quarantine, you're gonna have all this art you're going to have to, have you set a plan of how to attack this, the business of, of being an artist for when this is all over? Well, for me, the hardest part has always been the time to create the pieces because I'm, I work very quickly. So, you know, plugging in the business part, like I just want to be ready when this is over. And for a lot of the pieces I'm doing, I do a lot of licensing. So if that means like I'm doing prints with a company that then sells those pieces to designer showrooms or interior designers or those type of things. So I know if I do certain pieces, as soon as this is like lifted, they will be calling me wanting more stock. So I'm going to already be ready. So that's going to give me a great buffer. Artists are like so uh, tethered to their creativity. Sometimes it's hard to focus on that business part. And I, you know, I really kind of love the marketing part. I think everything is big picture. That's just how my mind works. So I kind of try to think what's my end goal. And then I kind of bring it tight and think of those steps to get to that. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it goes off the rail. Sometimes I get distracted. So what's the best way if we wanted to um, check out your work, if we wanted to, to look at some of your pieces and prints, what, what's the best way for us to, uh, to experience some of your art, Jennifer? Um, I do have a website, but right these days I'm kind of pointing everyone to my Instagram because it is so instant um, and you can see like the latest thing and I sell more pieces on Instagram than I do my website. So I think people just like the instant, like send you a message, you know, like get it going. Um, I guess the website like takes a little bit too much time. So the Instagram is um, Janesco Art and that's spelled J-A-N-E-S. K-O, and then just put art after it. And if you can only remember Janesco, you can still link from my personal page. It's in the bio and get to my art and the jewelry I think is on there too. Perfect, perfect. So what did I miss? What did you want to tell people that I've, I failed to ask because I am uh, uh, fluttering right now with speaking apparently today? <laughs> I, I would say, you know, artists just what they do is they're creative like that's their game like so this is their time to shine like figure out how to like change the way you do things like you know try new things um I just did like a small art study cell like and I don't normally like do those little teeny abstracts and it was great because like it was interesting and it was fast and it was small and it was affordable and in fact, I personally have just bought two pieces from artists that I would never be able to afford. Like I've admired their work for so long and one decided to do prints, who's, he's never done prints before. And the other artist is doing these little teeny studies and posting them on, them on Instagram. And I picked up one of those the other day. So those are two examples of artists that are, you know, they're very well known, like, you know, beautiful artists, but um, they had to also figure out a way to kind of pivot in this situation. And so I would just say, like, do that, like, think of ways to like, be outside the box, and you don't have to be tied to that. That's not long term. But right now, use your creativity. That's what you were made to do.